Hey, welcome back! A new video! This is Sam from Kinky Assignments and I would like to share with you the ultimate guide to being a good dominant. Three assets that every dominant needs to have because I think that everybody can be a good dominant. And of course, after the three assets, I'm going to give you an assignment where you can practice because practice makes perfect. So, a relationship between a dominant and a submissive is always based on trust. If you don't have trust, it's really, really hard to submit, to surrender into your power, actually, to somebody else. So that's why I, I believe that BDSM fits so perfectly within a relationship, uh, because you can build up trust. If you don't have that trust, it's really hard. And that means that the first asset has everything to do with that trust. It means you are, need to be able to put the needs of your submissive before your own needs. And that may sound contradictory. I mean, if you would have read Fifty Shades of Grey, it's not entirely how that's working in that relationship. Christian Grey is definitely not, not putting, he's, he's just following his needs and he's actually kind of pushing it on her and because she thinks she, he's so hot she, she gives in and in the end she likes it but it's the other way around it's not how it's supposed to be the needs of your submissive needs to be first so because can you imagine what happens if the submissive it has some needs and and you decide that you have needs that are stronger than that and they're contradicting what would happen can you imagine what happens with your trust Exactly. Your trust would be broken. So, let me give you an example. A couple of days ago, my master and I, uh, we played. Uh, let, give me, let me give you a bit of a context. We live separately. We don't live together. And because of the lockdown, we can't see each other for already quite a while. It's hard. And we're very busy, both of us. So we also really don't have a lot of time together. But now, this day, we had... In the morning, I was already, I was super horny. Um, I love pain. Pain is for me very connected to pleasure. Uh, pain turns me on. And in the morning, I always get an assignment and I got an assignment that I had to do something with pain. So I was totally turned on, I was wet and everything. And I let my master know as I'm supposed to. And then we didn't have a lot of contact that day, but in the end of the afternoon, he sent me a message. He said, get, be ready in an hour. So, I know what that means. I need to make sure that I'm ready, that I'm waiting for him naked, colored, not with this pretty color. I have a training color that I need to be colored. My, I need to color myself. I need to be on my knees in waiting position on the floor in front of my laptop. So I was, I was totally excited. I got a shower. I was so ready for it. I was looking forward to it for a long time. We didn't have that kind of session for a couple of weeks already and that's long for us. So I was excited and he was too, and I could feel it. I could feel his horniness through the phone. So I was there ready and we started playing. And the moment that he told me to put my nipple clamps on and I did, I could feel my body react in a different way. I could feel that it, I wasn't taking the pain like I used to do that. I usually do that. I was not turned on, but it was just painful. And I got a bit in shock. And then also what happens, of course, like, <gasps> Oh no, I don't have it anymore. And, oh, can I please him still? Because especially when I'm in submissive mode, everything I want, the, the, the big thing, the main thing that I want is to please him. I want to give him this. So, but I could feel it wasn't turning me on. Now he asked me for everything that I do. He asked me for a pussy check because he's not with me. Uh, I, I need to report to him. So I give him a pussy check and I tell him how wet I am, how wet I feel, it's different. And I told him it's about a six, which for me is very low. So it wasn't a good sign at all already. So we started to do something else. It, there was a bit more, but at one point I could feel it that it wasn't working and he asked me what was going on. And then I told him I can't take it master. And then he immediately got cut off everything and he tucked me into bed. Well, I get into my bed, but he's with me and he's sending me all soothing messages and make sure that I'm okay and until I finally fell asleep and I cried so hard because this was apparently not what I needed. I know that he needed it, that my needs 
went first at that moment. Can you imagine what it would have done if he would have taken his own needs and put that first instead of mine? Can you imagine what that would have done with trust? This is why it's so important. This is the right order. First, the needs of the submissive, then the needs of the dominant. Then the wants of the dominant, and last but not least, is the wants of the submissive. They come last. And especially, this is very important because I wanted to give him this. I really wanted him to torture me. And not so much because of me, because my body wasn't reacting at this. But I wanted to give him this because I know that's what he, he wanted then. And I just couldn't do it. And he, and he, I'm, I'm, very ha I'm very lucky with my master. Even on a distance, he can feel what's going on. And he can tell me what's going on. But this is the main thing. And if you are able to put the needs of your submissive first, that will make you a hell of a dominant. If you do that, you need another asset. And the second asset is being able to listen. And you have to listen to three things. First of all, the things she says, it's not weak to ask her what she likes or what she's into, what kind of play she wants to do, if you want to play. I mean, if you decide to play, to do an anal game, and she's really not into anal because maybe she's uh, having trouble with the number two, or it's painful out there, or she's just not feeling it, and she would really like to do some bondage. The moment that you, you push and you think, oh, I'm going to do anal with her because she always likes anal and she's not enjoying it, you're not going to have a good time. And if you ask her, I would love to play with you, what would you like? And she says, oh, I really, really would like to do some bondage today. I would really want to feel helpless. And, and you're going to do that. Well, think about what your evening will look like that. I mean, it's also for you. It's not just for her, but you're, both of you will have a so much better time if you do something that will please her. So not asking is weaker, I think, than asking. And it's definitely also putting her needs first as well. Next, besides asking her what she wants, and next, next, besides listening to what she is saying, it's also really important to listen to what she's not saying. That's what my master did. He could feel that I was a bit quieter than normal. Usually I use a lot of, uh, you know, like the fires and the drips to show him that I'm turned on and I didn't. So he was listening to what I was not saying. And the third thing that you need to listen to is listen to her body. My master wasn't there yet, but still he asked me if I was wet. So he is listening to my body. And this is what you can do. I mean, if you're together, it's easy for you to do. You can see if a body is reacting. You can see it, where her eyes are looking, uh, how her body is relaxing, if she's tensed or relaxed. So this is the third thing that you need to. So your second asset is to listen. First asset, be able to take her needs first, to put her needs first. And second asset is listen. There's a third asset that can really help you to be a good dominant. Your submissive surrenders, submits to you because she wants your guidance, your leadership. Take it. And for that you need self-confidence. And self-confidence is completely different from arrogance. Arrogance means I know what I'm doing and you don't. Or maybe you do too, but I know it better. I don't have to learn anything anymore. Self-confidence, you can be self-confident and still learn all the time. I mean, the fact that you're watching this video is perfect, but you can still be self-confident. You can still be very confident about what you do. And self-confidence is something that you can learn. It has to do with making decisions. It doesn't mean that you, all the time, that you know what you're doing. That's totally fine if you don't. But what you need to do is make sure that your submissive always knows what she needs to do. And if you don't know what she needs to do at that moment, then give her an assignment to do nothing. But you are in charge. So no asking her, what shall we do now? That's not going to work. That's not what you need to be able to is to practice also is to be so confident that you are the one in charge. You are taking the decisions. 
you are deciding what's going on. So you can ask her what she wants, but you decide. Understand there is a difference. So I have an assignment for you for that. This is your assignment for tonight or whenever you want to do that. I suggest you save this video and you take it going to play. You're going to practice your decision making skills. I dare you, I challenge you. Just pick a scene. So maybe you need a bit of preparation because your assignment is that you are going to decide all the time what's going to happen. You can ask her, for instance, do you need to slow down, for instance, but on the other hand, she has her safe words. Just try and see if you don't ask her. See what happens, see what happens in your, in your dynamics. See what, what is this fear like, see how, how well she can surrender. What my experience is, that the firmer that he takes charge, the easier it is for me to surrender and the more I like it. Now I have a few tips for you. First of all is just prepare yourself. The more you prepare, the easier it is to think about what exactly you are deciding on. So just telling her, this is, the, this is what we're gonna do now. You're gonna do this now. I'm gonna do this to you now. Sometimes you don't even have to tell her, but just, just do it. That's totally fine. It might be that there will be a moment that you are doubting, that you're not entirely sure what your decision will be. Then I suggest the following. Just tell her, stand with your, with your head facing the wall and with your heads, hands on your back with your legs spread. It's a really, it's a very common slave position, but it's very at ease. But the, the good thing is she can't see you. So she's depending and, and it will intensify the rest of her uh, senses because now she's gonna listen what's happening. It's really, really nice to make some exciting noises now. So, and then you have all the time in the world to make your decision. You can leave her there for half an hour. Let's just see what happens. So this is your assignment. It's very easy actually. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna play and this is what you're gonna do. You are going to decide the whole day after that, after that you're finished, take your time to evaluate and write it down for yourself. How was it? What changed in your dynamics? What changed in the sphere? Uh, how did it feel for you to be, did it grow your confidence? Because that's what I'm, my purpose is with this assignment is to grow your confidence and also to give you the experience what it's like if you are in charge and if you take charge, take her leash and make sure that she feels who's the boss, because you both are gonna love it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like it, subscribe if you want to be notified for every other video, and uh, I'm just saying, play with passion.